Howdy folks, Aaron here again with a few more musings or thoughts in relation to the wonderful Unicity Compensation Plan. <clears throat> Excuse me. This presentation is built out of a number of comments that I've received over the last little while. This is going to be a time-specific, therefore finite life presentation that is built around the recent changes and enhancements to the compensation plan specifically and some of the principles that underlie that. If it's received well and adds value, then I'll certainly look to redo it in a non-time-specific way that teaches people on a go-forward basis. But this one is linked to this time and place, given some of the recent comments that I have received and heard of, all of which, frankly, have been very gratifying. The first series of comments are these. People's checks going up by 30 37, 42, 83, and I think the highest number I heard was 90%. Now, those are big increases and certainly gratifying when all of these numbers and charts and algebra turns into real income improvement for real people who are building a real business. And from the conversations I've had with these specific people with those specific improvements, they're a little bit perplexed as to how is this going on and is this a bit of illusion and how does this work and why and all this good, wonderful musings. So this conversation is an attempt to answer that, reassure you in that regard, and most importantly, plant some seeds of, okay, therefore what? How do I take advantage of and maximize even further this wonderfully new, proven opportunity that now befalls me? And more importantly, how do I help sell and train and teach and convert others to it? But first, a little bit of discomfort for me personally. Another comment made just recently, in fact, in Korea by Clayton Barton at the North American and European Gala Dinner when he was introducing me and said, I think if I'm paraphrasing correctly, that I was the author of this compensation plan or an author of the majority of it, I think he said. That's accurate. I wrote this plan. Now, it's been improved on, as things always are over the years, and I'm gratified from that, but the fundamental principles still remain. I share that with you, not to pat myself on the back, but to hopefully demonstrate my bona fides or credibility or um, philosophical underpinning that I'm coming from, or in short version, I know what I'm speaking of. Case in point, team volume invented by me, ADP invented by me, horizontal compression invented by me, the overlap of what used to be called phase one and phase two, or team development, organizational development, compounding together, developed by me. Learning levels before you step into generations, that team versus organizational, developed by me. Variable leg volume, developed by me. Now, I could go on and on and on and lecture you and pat myself on the back. That's not the point here. But the point is to demonstrate, I think I know what I'm talking about. As a great case in point, variable leg volume. Talk about an absolute blinding glimpse of the obvious. The world does not grow, and certainly your business does not grow, in three evenly matched legs. Three legs of five, three legs of ten, three legs of whatever. We don't live in a perfect world like that. If your business is like mine, I dare say you've got one huge leg that you're excited about and you're trying to build and push along. You've got a medium-sized leg and a leg that's not quite as big as the other two. You've got a, a mama bear, a, a papa bear, a mama bear, and a Goldilocks bear or a baby bear. And that's what your organization looks like. And I can give you all the statistics that prove that's the case, but we all know intuitively the world works in a variable nature, not a nice, even, balanced thing. So why is it that most comp plans then require the same volume in each leg? That's just not reflective of how the world works. So that's a great telltale sign in comp plans. If all the leg volumes are equal, then by definition, it's built on theory and nice, clean models, not on a reflection of what really happens in the real world with real people, which is sometimes just a little bit messy. So I share that with you by way of background. Again, not to pat myself on the back, and I'll never speak of these things again, other than to help you understand, I think I've got a bit of an idea of what I'm talking about. 
So here's some thoughts to understand and ponder, ponder on, if you will, some underlying principles that were running through top of mind back then and have been reinforced over the years and certainly are coming back to the fore right now. First is there's power in the middle. There's absolute power in the middle. If I was to be asked what the key rank in Unicity is, I would answer this too. It's manager and more importantly, it's director. I can get into the lecture as to why that's the case. It's not ambassador, global ambassador. It's not diamond or double diamond. Wonderful those ranks are there. They certainly prove the point. But the key ranks are manager. Your business is made up of a collection of managers. If you will, that's the DNA building block. But where it all begins to happen, where the magic begins to occur, where skills have been learned and languages spoken, is at the director level. Why is it, therefore, that most comp plans, ours accepted, focus either on one of either extreme, the beginning or the end? A bunch of plans, let's say, that have two legs, and the old joke is, what has two legs and can't run? Well, it's a binary plan. They focus on the front end, this easy money. It comes quickly. Oh, my goodness, must be a great plan. But it stalls out very quickly at, quickly at the back end. Or they speak of this great leveraged income that's going on. Oh, guess what? All the rest of the folks are starving to death while Mr. or Mrs. Big Dog is enjoying the great lifestyle. Both are short-term strategies. The power's in the middle. That's where businesses grow and sometimes don't grow from. So why wouldn't we put the money there? All those income increasing examples I spoke of were people that are in the middle, and frankly, that's where the money should go. That's where people are beginning to develop skill and, and should be rewarded for that. That's when they're beginning to contemplate, hang on a minute, this is a real business here. I think I should begin to ponder on doing this in a more committed full-time way. And instead of hoping that it will turn out, they know they're already on the path towards it turning out because they're already experiencing the power of that and they've experienced it two or three times over, and I'll get to that later on. So principle number one, there's power in the middle. Some other principles, compounding. When you have team development and organizational development beginning to overlap, the three or the five percents over here in team development, adding to the five percents generationally over here in the organizational development, you begin to see this whole do more, get more. I built individual people connected. I turned them all or helped them become managers and therefore teams, and that's connected. And the income I make off them individually and the income I make off their teams adds together. Yes, not a nice, some nice five generations down, it's five plus five. It's levels on one hand and generations on the other. But you can begin to see the compounding effect of the income from the compounding effect of your efforts. Hopefully, all of me waving my hands in the air here has given you that not just are there underlying principles here, but they're correct principles. They make sense. They sit well. They're sort of aha moments or what I call them, they're BGOs, blinding glimpses of the obvious. And the great thing with BGOs is they're blindingly obvious, but only once they're pointed out. And part of our assignment in this industry is to point out the BGOs and say, hang on a minute, the power should be in the middle. Hang on a minute, there should be compounding. Hang on a minute, your leg volume should be variable to reflect what really happens in life, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Some other principles. With this comp plan, you learn the basics at an easy level, and then you apply them at an increasingly complicated and leveraged and rewarding level. <clears throat> Case in point, learning 5% by level in team development is easy to learn. Now, that gets more complicated when similar 5% get spoken about in terms of generations and managers and teams and all this other stuff, but you've already learned the principles and the power of it at a much simpler level. A good example is when you're good at arithmetic and move on to ma uh, multiplication and division, then pre-algebra, then algebra, then pre-calculus, then calculus, that continuum gets you to differential calculus. If you try and sit down and learn differential calculus without learning those fundamental pre-principles, you're just going to give yourself an aneurysm and hate math for the rest of your life, like most folks do. So learning the principles at a simpler vanilla style level makes a whole bunch of sense for people as they're learning what works in this business and how they get paid. Now, you're all familiar with this picture. Some, for some of you, particularly the more creative types, 
This can be a fearful thing. It's graphs and charts and numbers and lines and oh my gosh. What I would suggest you do is just get comfortable with this. Learn each section. Focus on each one. Look at your commission summary and say, okay, how did this particular part of the comp plan personify for me? How does this work in practice? Take it from the abstract and all these graphs and charts and turn it into practice here. Now, as relates to this strength in the middle conversation, let's look more particularly at some of these features or some of the parts of this plan. This plot should be familiar to you. Team development, we've spoken about that. Width pays depth. Do more, get more. You notice I always talk about 5% in these first five levels because quite frankly, with any degree of volume, why wouldn't you do 250 and get paid the 5%? That's a very simple learning tool. I don't need to explain generations and compression and all this sort of stuff. I know that I sponsored Bob, who sponsors Sue and Bruce, who sponsored four other people, who blah, 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 laying that over in a simplistic genealogical sense, applying those 5% because I did my 250. I can figure that out in the back of the envelope. I learn it at a fundamental, easy level. I get it. We're layering the knowledge base. We're providing the rewards as the learning occurs. And then guess what? It looks somewhat familiar to that director rank, this subset of the organizational development. Well, guess what? Five generations there at 5% with variable leg volume of 5, 3, and 1 because that's about what directors' organizations actually are. In fact, as an aside, when we determine those volumes, the inherent mathematician and I were noodling about, we... We, and you'll hopefully you'll appreciate this, with three and a half standard deviations of confidence, when you have a $5,000 first leg, you will have a $3,000 second leg and at least a $1,000 third leg. That's just how life is. And you can work in all three equally. They will grow at different rates because different people do different things at different rates. Voila, we have reflected real life in our comp plan. Now, Back again. This gets more complicated. We're talking about generations here and, and thousand, thousand point team volume and all these other things. But we're doing it on the basis of already having learned how leverage income occurs, how, how that functions and how that generates income for me beyond my own activities. We're layering slightly more complication here, but the principles are the same. And then guess what? We add the two together. Again, not exactly aligned. That's why I haven't aligned these two these two pictures, the team development, organizational development, your levels don't map across to your generations. But the principles you learn as you earn from levels, and then as you begin to earn more and more from your generations, transfer over. What I've learned on the left-hand side, I can more easily apply on the right-hand side and add a bit more complication to it. I can move from my addition and subtraction and multiplication and division on the left-hand side to now I'm starting to talk about some algebra on the right-hand side, but I can handle it because I've learned the lessons on the left-hand side. And most importantly, forget all that, one adds to the other. It's accretive. It's compounding. The efforts I, I, I earn on from my work with individuals also are added to the efforts that I earn when I work with teams of individuals led by specific individuals. That's why the increase in income. You're getting up to, let's assume that your levels are all managers, you're getting up to 10% per level slash generation. The life's not perfect. That's not exactly how it operates, but you can begin to see the power. You can now begin to see why these people had that sort of increase in their income because they're experiencing the power of compounding efforts and good on them. They've obviously built a nice, tight, wide, and active organization. They deserve a reward because those are all productive activities. So great. Blah, blah, blah. Aaron's waved his hands in the air and taught me a whole bunch of stuff I really didn't want to know. What does all this mean? Therefore, what? A great question. Well, proof's in the pudding, right? Therefore, what? This will generate, and does, let's not talk future tense here, much stronger checks, much larger checks, or more dollars per volume. You build X volume, you will get more income on this comp plan than, frankly, any other in the industry. I stand by that statement. We'll speak to that a little bit later on. 
It's mostly felt at, up to and including these key ranks. This manager through director, senior director, executive director. I'm not saying it's not felt thereafter. That's when real leveraged income kicks in and you start getting that sixth generation and three generations of 3% and, and those last three generations of 1%. People look at that and say, well, that's not much income. Guess what? 40% of my check comes from those bottom three generations at a paltry, in quotation mark, 1%. But I've learned the lessons, I've accelerated my income on the fundamental activities that I need to engage in, and I've been rewarded for what I did, so guess what? That which we get paid to do, we do. I do more of it. Thus, my check continues to, continues to conf- compound. To that point, it reinforces that director rank, helps you get there, lets you see the light in helping others get there because their increase in income by getting there has no negative impact on you. In fact, only has a positive impact on you and then allows you to build on that further as you get into more organizational development, president's club member ranks and bonuses and other wonderful things that come along. Another great secret, it produces in great income, but also income stability. One of the great scourges of this industry is a feast or famine mentality, bonus pools or one-offs or whatever. And hallelujah, I'm never going to turn down a bonus. But the problem with God is all these great income stories. Well, I joined company ABC and I made a gazillion dollars my first month. Great. The question I always ask when that statement is made was, well, what was month two's income? Or three or four? After all, if we're looking to build a long-term, stable, residually income-leveraged business, shouldn't the income be stable? And shouldn't it grow over time as your volume does? And shouldn't it grow proportionate to your volume, not be some hallelujah headline with no great substance behind it? I joke often about our comp plan is steak, from which we can very easily create sizzle. Too many other comp plans are a whole bunch of sizzle that it's impossible to reverse engineer steak from. I want steak and I want sizzle. One comes from the other. You cannot reverse engineer that one. So be wary of first month stories. Ask those very pointed questions of those who bandy them about. We build a real business that produces a real income that really increases as does our volume. So... Therefore, what even more? What do I do with that? Well, build a real business. Build it tight. Build it wide. Now, by building wide, you can say, well, I don't need three legs. Well, that's true. But by building wide, you're helping the volume stay closer to you, thus maximizing levels and generations compounding. But you're also setting up wonderful future benefits. When you become director, all that extra volume horizontally compresses to become your third leg. It's not wasted. It helps you qualify and you're paid on it. Every PV of volume does both for you. No other plan does that. It also sets up, thinking way down the track of Diamond, extra legs of volume that you can aggregate into your new, I'll use my own case, Aaron number two, where I form my ADP and then get paid twice on that. Now, just to blow your mind just a tad, I'm getting paid twice on that because I'm my own upline in an ADP sense. I'm also, for the first levels of volume there, getting paid twice on that because I'm doing 250 and I've got the levels and the generations happening again. All of a sudden, we start talking about 10, 12, 15, a weighted average percentage on the residual incremental volume in that spot. That is unheard of in an industry that is built on a boring and standard 5%. So building it tight and wide has all sorts of immediate benefits in terms of maximizing the levels and the generations. It also sets you up wonderfully well for extracting more value from the other parts of the comp plan, which are equally as powerful, ADP and horizontal compression more particularly. Another therefore what? By not playing the game of you know recruiting someone and handing them off to someone where they feel like a chattel or an asset that gets plunked around, you're having your organization built in a way that reflects relationships. I bring someone in, guess where I put them? Wherever is best for them. More often than not, absent a particular skill set or demographic or geographic challenge, I put them frontline to me. That's They're the relationship I had. Why would I farm them out to someone else? That's another whole conversation, but I believe that your organization should reflect the relationships. 
One last therefore what, which I'll just tease on. Imagine for a moment, and I'll teach the leaders how to do this, having this level of conversation appropriately phrased and prefaced with someone who knows comp plans, is in this business, and knows kind of what we're talking about. Imagine being able to say to those people, <clears throat> you know, director level person at Acme Inc., hey, Ms. New Person over there, why don't you bring all that you have, all the skills, all your organization, all your talent, all your experience, and let us help you extract full value, full value from that. Oh, and by the way, because of the way our comp plan works and the sort of organization you have, I can guarantee you that you'll make more money here in month one and two and three and thereafter than you did last month at Company X. But as I said, that's for another time and another day for a different audience. For now, we lead with the product, we teach folks how to consume the product, we, we plant the seeds of becoming product advocates without them telling them that's what we're doing, they become product advocates, they become product sharers, they ask questions about the business, they, build, they be, become business builders in that continuum of conversion. All the way through, you assume the posture from a product perspective, now hopefully increasingly so from a compensation plan perspective, that you have what they want. And you have something in the comp plan that is equally as profound, equally as effective, equally as rigorously designed and delivered as the science behind our products. That's the point of this presentation. So that you can sleep well at night knowing this comp plan has the exact same intellectual, scientific, mathematical, real world rigor behind it as the white folks in the coats do behind our products. That's a great one-two punch that, frankly, is unheard of in the industry. There you go. Sorry to lecture you. I got a bit carried away there from time to time. I apologize. Hopefully, you can sense my passion for this. Hopefully, it transmits to you somewhat. If nothing else, know this. You have a powerful, powerful compensation plan, well thought through with all of the bits and pieces that are needed, that is reflective of real life, that matches in power the wonder and the power of the products, and the, the two of those working together in synergy is an incomparable offering in the industry. Assume that posture, speak with people with that confidence, and magic will happen in your business. Thanks, and have a great day.